everybody, this is Pastor Chris Monahan. I want to just get on here real quick and talk about some issues that I think are very prevalent as we are um, 50 or so days away from the 2024 election. And um, so many Christians right now, especially those in ministry, are afraid uh, to speak out and condemned as if we're being labeled Christian uh, nationalist or activist, political activist. Instead of realizing as a, as a pastor um, and as people who are Christians, you know, remember John the Baptist himself, he called out Herod for his immorality. And there are issues that are in government that the church is called to have a voice in. We're not called to be quiet. We're not called to be silent. And um, so today I want to just kind of blow that out of the water, the idea that, that Christians should not be involved. Um, one of the scriptures people say, you know, Paul said, you know, but our citizenship is in heaven. So, you know, it's a beautiful picture. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm one of heaven's citizens. And I think part of being a citizen of heaven is bringing the kingdom of God to earth. I just finished a, a book once again, I think it's the second time I read, read it um, by George Ladd about the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom. And we're called to bring the, the kingdom to earth. And that means we have to speak out against ungodly things that are happening in our nation. And Paul himself, you know, he said, yeah, my citizenship's in heaven. But if you study the book of Acts, it's interesting because um, when you look at the book of Acts, it, Paul sometimes uses his citizenship and sometimes he doesn't. Like sometimes he gets flogged and he gets thrown in prison. And other times he stops and says, hey, did you know I'm a citizen of Rome? And um, back then, if you were a citizen of Rome, they, the, the soldiers could not you know, put you in chains or harm you because of the power of your citizenship. And uh, so I would encourage you to look through the book of Acts. And uh, here's one of the stories where Paul uses his citizenship. And again, we want to encourage uh, all of the citizens of the United States to vote for, um, you know, to get out and vote, get registered, get signed up, especially uh, my friends in Pennsylvania. We need your help right now for uh, to get Donald Trump in office because uh, we do not want Kamala in office. <laughs> but uh, it says this, it says the Tribune ordered him, Paul, to be brought into the barracks saying that he should be examined by flogging. But when they had stretched him out for the whips, Paul said to the centurion, who is standing by, is it lawful for you to flog a man who is a Roman citizen and uncondemned? When the centurion heard that, he went to the tribune and said to him, what are you about to do? For this man is a Roman citizen. So the tribune came and said to him, tell me, you are a Roman citizen? And he said, yes. Paul said, yes. And the tribune said, I bought this citizenship for a large sum. Paul said, I am a citizen by birth. Uh, so those who were about to examine him withdrew from him immediately, and the tribune also was afraid, for he realized that Paul was a Roman citizen that had bound him. And again, uh, you know, to be a citizen in the Roman Empire was a huge deal. It's a big deal in the United States. It's something we should not take lightly. You know, people say, well, pastor, we need to submit ourselves to the governing authorities, according to Romans chapter 13. Our Constitution says that we, the people, are the government. You understand? We, the people, are the government. So what we need to be doing is enforcing the Constitution upon those in government who are not following the Constitution. But I'll just be honest. There's, there's not a backbone in the church like there needs to be. There's not uh, this dedication to say, listen, if our country is turning into a tyranny— we need to overthrow it or we need to change it. That's what the Constitution says. I'm not seeing anything that's controversial. This is what we're called to do. And so the Romans uh, understood, the Roman soldiers understood this, is that they could get in big trouble. There's actually, uh, historically, that Rome had actually gone in and decimated a city because they did not honor the citizens. And um, when we look at what we're up against, there's this issue called cultural Marxism. And I do have an entire course on this that I will, I'll put in the comments that I would encourage you to study. I never studied cultural Marxism until about uh, five years ago. And what cultural Marxism is, Marxism was a system, an economic system, but it's really guised as a demonic uh, system to crush 
Christianity and biblical foundations in any nation that it governs. Because if it was just an economic system, why would the first one of the first things they do um, next to taking away all private property is to uh, get rid of the pastors and get rid of the churches? So again, what we see with cultural Marxism, which is what we're battling today in our government, and it's being fueled in our government schools, in on, on our media, uh, through government websites, and it teaches unforgiveness, it teaches hatred, it teaches us to stir up the offenses of the past and begin to judge people by their skin color. Uh, they're, there's, you know, they're training people, re-educating people. Uh, like I would probably need to be re-educated that I need to feel bad because my skin color is white. And what we have to do is push back on this because these are unbiblical ideas. There's hatred, there's unforgiveness, there's DEI, which is um, basically diversity, equity, and inclusion, which is not hiring people or moving people forward based on merit. Meritocracy is a big word that I would encourage you to study. Our country and the Bible is based on uh, what you merit is how you get promoted. If you are good at what you do and you invest in it and you work hard, uh, you get rewarded. If you don't, then uh, you don't just get awarded because you're a minority or you're the perceived oppressed person in, in the community. That's just not, it's unbiblical. We judge people based on the character of their heart, uh, not, not the color of their skin. And the DEI training goes goes even to that place right now where they're actually um, saying that uh, that uh, that uh, only the only people that can be racist right now, non-minorities can't be racist. And that's just another lie, another joke that they're pushing forward. Uh, another thing that they push forward is is uh, no private property. Um, one of the first things they do is they steal, um, take back all private property in the land. Um, equality of outcome is what cultural Marxism pushes as well. And again, it's it's equality of opportunity, not equality of outcome. And uh, that's more lies that are being pushed forth. Um, the Marxists, they will cheat, lie, they will do whatever it takes to win because their goal is to pull people out of that place of power. And if you are a land, like what they would do, what they've been doing in, in countries, Marxist countries, um, we're talking about China, we're talking about um, Korea, everything becomes state-owned. Uh, the farmers, uh, their, their land is taken away. That's one of the first things they do, and it's given to people who can't farm. And then the next thing you know, there's a terrible food crisis because the people that are able to produce food have been killed or their land has been taken, and then they put in people that aren't qualified to farm. And so, I mean, we see this in America right now, too. The, the, the farmers are being attacked. Farmers are being, we, just keep your eye out on the food supply. I mean, it's, it's what cultural Marxism does. Uh, there's no morality. So the only goal of Marxism is to uh, take those people that are apparently oppressed, which uh, you'll see this in the narrative. And again, I would, I would, I would study this. So um, if you would look at it, the you know apparently the oppressors of our culture right now are white, male, uh, heterosexual, uh, rich Christian people. So what uh, basically that's everything I am. So you know I'm I'm the quote unquote oppressor, and um, the oppressed people are all those who are not white, not apparently rich. Um, I'm not, well, I wouldn't say I was rich, but according to American standards, uh, according to world standards, I am very rich, actually. Um, you know, Christian. So anything that gives that per, uh, appearance of power right now is oppressed. And our, we, we don't have a voice in this culture because that's what the Marxists say. And again, we don't judge people based on uh, whether they're, you know, rich or poor, whether they're, because they're, there are poor, unrighteous people, and there are um, rich oppressors. I mean, there are people that are evil that are rich, but there's evil people that are poor. And I always remember the story from Jordan Peterson, um, and he said this, he, he was a liberal when he first got out of college, and he said one of the first things he did is he said he got involved in a, in a um, onto the, the liberal party, Democratic party um, in Canada, whatever that's called, and he worked for him for three years and because he said, he, you know, he wanted to take care of the poor. 
And he realized after three years, these people don't love the poor. They just hate rich people. And that's wrong. You don't hate people because of their economic status. Um, we're called to hate evil. Um, we don't hate people because of their skin color. We don't hate people because of their sexuality. We don't hate people for that. Um, we award people based on meritocracy, based on their merit. And this is what's happening right now in the Democratic Party. Um, they're pushing cultural Marxism. Uh, our news media, our channels are pushing this. And as a pastor, I'm going to push back because these are ideas. This is an ideology that is not just uh, bad ideology. It's evil. It's wrong. It's destructive. It will destroy our country. So um, the pastors and those in this position, anybody who has a platform needs to speak out against cultural Marxism. Um, and so that's, that's a lot about <laughs> cultural Marxism. But if you don't know about it, you don't know about it. Um, what happened on July uh, 13th, I believe, uh, yeah, July 13th, at 6.11 uh, p.m. in Butler, Pennsylvania, uh, is horrifying. And um, to imagine where our country would be right now if Donald Trump didn't do that. Something that simple. He turned his head. This was a miracle. This was, I believe, the greatest miracle since... Uh, George Washington crossed the Delaware for our nation. Our nation would probably be in civil war right now. Our um, ec everything, economic system, would be thrown into chaos right now. And there are um, a lot of reasons that if you're not concerned about what happened on July 13th and recognizing that there are evil people out there right now wanting to destroy our nation, and um, Donald Trump, with all his flaws, just like you and I have, is still the choice, I believe, that God has for our nation. And um, we see the hand of God, if you can't, don't see this as a miracle, um, where you can see in this shot right here that um, the bullet just grazed his ear versus um, having a brain-dead pr uh, presidential candidate right now. Um, this is what Marxism does. It doesn't care. It doesn't care about morality. It doesn't care about cheating. It doesn't care. It, there's no morals to a uh, cultural Marxist. And the Democratic Party right now is pushing cultural Marxism. It's about winning. It's about taking power away from the perceived oppressors when, um, in fact, we need to embrace those who have done righteously. Listen, um, I've tried to model my life with the resources that, that God's provided me with is to be a blessing to our community. And I've, I've worked real hard to do that. And uh, I've been called by prominent people in our community. I, I was called um, a racist. I was called um, uh, the most dangerous person to the black community. I mean, it's dumb, you know. And I'm a blessing to the black community. I'm a blessing to our city. I love our city. And, um, but at the same time, we realize that this is the, the language that cultural Marxists use because they can't stand the truth. And so what they have to do is they have to come up with lies and labels to call us oppressors or call us racist um, to shut us up. Out. And we need to be awakened to what we need to do. So, man, should Christians be involved in politics? man? Uh, there was nothing more than Satan would want for us to keep our mouths shut. We are battling some evil ideologies. They're unbiblical ideologies. They are destructive ideologies. And to claim that, oh, I don't want to get involved in politics because someone in my church might be offended, um, let me tell you right off is that uh, we have to be willing to let go of those fears, let go of losing friends. I mean, this is not a time that we should be saying, hey, I want to, hoping to make more friends or grow my congregation or whatever, whatever you feel like you need to do. Today is the time to stand up and speak truth. We stand together. Uh, we will be united. And, but if we are divided and we back down, just like Paul, Paul used his citizenship. Um, vote. Register to vote, my friend. Make sure that you are voting, getting out there, and, and using your citizenship. This is not, um, uh, this is a call that we have as Christians. It's to be involved 
in every realm, be involved in education, be involved in, in the media, be involved in helping um, establish godly principles, rules, and laws for our society. And if we don't do that, because right now, even the judicial system is corrupt and the, uh, the election integrity system is corrupt. These are the things that need to be established in righteousness. And so I wanna encourage you, we pray, <laughs> but we act. So pray, act, don't, uh, don't coward, be a coward in this season. Speak truth, speak it in love. So I hope this is a helpful uh, talk for you today on Christians in politics. It's Pastor Chris Monahan. Enjoy your day. God bless.